we've been meaning to get to this this story for a while. So let's go to CNN.com. This city disbanded its police department seven years ago. Here's what happened next. <laughs> Last week, Minneapolis officials confirmed they were considering a fairly rare course of action, disbanding the city police department. It's not the first locale to break up a department, but no cities as populous have ever attempted it. Minneapolis City Council members haven't specified what or who will replace it if the department disbands. Camden, New Jersey, may be the closest thing to a case study they can get. The city, home to a population about 17% of Minneapolis size, dissolved its police department in 2012 and replaced it with an entirely new one after corruption rendered the existing agency unfixable. And you, how did how did they do this and not have more people notice? Well, it, you go, well, lower your expectations a little bit here. First of all, like I've said, if, if, and I think this would be a good transition, if you got rid of it, pretty much every city police department and rolled it into the county just to simplify it so that law enforcement is a coverage thing, not a, you know, a, a geographic inclusive thing or an overlapping layers thing. And you really have uh, a more accountable layer of law enforcement at the county level with sheriffs being elected and constitutionally the you know highest law enforcement in the land. Before it's police reforms, Camden was routinely named one of the most violent cities in the U.S. Now, seven years after the old department was booted, though around 100 officers were rehired, the city's crime has dropped by close to half. Officers host outdoor parties for residents and knock on doors to introduce themselves. It's a radically different Camden than it was even a decade ago. Here's how they did it. Why departments dissolve police? A city's decision to dissolve its police department is often a matter of money. And the cities that chose to do so are often quite small. Camden comes closest to Minneapolis in size and history. Earlier this year, the village of Deposit, New York, dissolved because it cost $200,000 a year. Now, a single sheriff's deputy is assigned to the village. Hey, how about that? Just a redundant layer of law enforcement gone. Hey, sheriff deputy, take their, they, they respond to calls, take their place. No big deal. And like that's what we have out here. You know, we have a sheriff's deputy who patrols. And is is more, you know lives out here and is generally more connected with the community. And that's we don't need, you know, a whole other police agency. And how many how many places could you analyze from that perspective and go, hmm, a redundant layer of government where people are being taxed to pay for jobs that shouldn't exist, dig ditches, fill them back up, or harass citizens for more profit for bureaucrats and people in on it? Hmm, yeah. It sounds like a crime. Sounds like we don't need that. Sounds like that government agency and redundancy in and of itself is a racket that we'd be better off without. <clears throat> Garden City, Missouri laid off all of its officers and suspended its police chief because, as its mayor said in 2018, the city couldn't afford to keep them employed. In a bizarre move, Rio Vista police leadership abruptly left the department and half of the remaining officers left for other jobs of the California City's department can no longer go on. Camden did it to root out corruption. The crime rate was among the worst in the country, with nine square miles, and among nearly 75,000 residents, there were over 170 open-air drug markets reported in 2013, county officials told CNN. Violent crime abounded. Police corruption was at the core yeah, government makes it worse. You give up. You give them again. You if you use don't don't use the government. If you see a problem, use something other than government. Government always makes it worse. There are always unintended consequences, and this is just. I mean, I always all right. Someone's going to find some exception, but you know, this is just a perfect example of this. Even just backfiring. Lawsuits filed against the department and covered that officers routinely planted evidence on suspects, fabricated reports, committed perjury. After corruption was exposed, courts overturned the convictions of 88 people. So in 2012, officials voted to completely disband beyond reform. And the Camden County Police Department officially began its tenure. No other city of Camden sizes than anything quite like it. So they didn't 
get rid of policing even they just got rid of an agency and replace it with another one like it's again keep your expectations low here people the, the, the government parent like even in minneapolis if they just said all right we're done this thing is beyond reproach you know or beyond repair we're gonna we're gonna get rid of this thing and we are going to rely on county law enforcement there's going to be a lot more money going to county law enforcement to do a lot of the same things that the Minneapolis Police Department was doing. Now, they'll do a lot less. Again, I, I'm not saying this is bad. This is very exciting. Big positive reforms. A great, very important direction of getting law enforcement down to the community level, uncorrupted by central authorities, either in budget or in policy. And just by that, you're going to get way more in line with the natural law. This is incremental. Do not expect a revolution in policing. And this is, again, why I say, you know, in terms of flattening the curve or like getting getting everything that we need and the attention, you know, of, of reform. It's going to be a long time. How the new Camden police changed its approach. City officials had two objectives in remaking Camden's police, reducing crippling violent crime and making residents feel safer. Louis Capelli, Camden County Freeholder Director, another term for a county level public official, said the department still has a ways to go, but its efforts over the last seven years have been largely successful. Back then, residents of Camden City absolutely feared the police department and members of the department, he told CNN. They, the residents, wanted that to change violent. But yeah, people are afraid of police. Can we, can we finally talk about that? Yeah, yes. Can, you, can we change that? Like, hey, this is, hey, you know how there's this, like, and you know, how in the bigger picture, I've talked a lot about how government is not going to end, or at least as we know it, you know, and, and I think even this anarchist framing of government ending, like it's not going to end, it's going to transition to something effectively voluntary and or irrelevant as an institution, as it gets replaced with better things. <clears throat> or, you know, be, transitions to voluntary, you know, as it's phased down to the community level. But I got this from Stefan Mullen, who said, government will not end with a bang, but with a whimper and a yawn. It's going to be boring. Oh, yeah, we're going mean, to we're stop doing that. And and this is this is the, like like I've said before, you know, the, the, the progress, the real progress towards freedom comes not in the periods of the people so much as the quiet times of progress in between. And, and there's going to be a, a, you know, following this period of upheaval, if we're ever allowed out of it, right, if they don't just keep pumping us with fear porn, if, if we come out of this and we go, okay, you know, these this is the conversation that we need to have. This is, it's going to be like this. Hey, you know how we're kind of afraid of cops? We don't like that. Let's change. Let's, let's talk to the cops and let's fix this. This is a very, like, normy thing. It's not because... A bunch of people woke up and became libertarian or started reading political philosophy or understanding, you know, police civilian relationships. It's just because and we have the time, we have the luxury, either we're all on welfare or corona unemployed, or we're just, you know, employment is so good that we can on this. By the way, another possible positive shift is that a lot of people are going to be able to survive and thrive with part-time jobs. That's going to be a major positive transition for people being able to pursue better lives, to look out for their mental health, for social health, to, to address these bigger issues, to be more charitable, to start new businesses, to have hobbies, to be artists. Like the fact that people are going to be able to survive with more part-time jobs in the future as a result of this huge positive economic shift, silver lining here. But in, in situations uh, like that, it's just, hey, we have the time. You know how we don't, you know, we want to address this now. We don't really like being afraid of police in our community. Can we talk about this? Let's start going to police community meetings. Let's start going to city council meetings. Let's start going to police accountability review board meetings. Let, let's start running for city hall. Let's start running for city council. Let's start running, running for mayor <coughs> or town councilor or county supervisor. Or whatever. Let's, yeah, you know what? We just, and that's how it ends with a yawn. You just go, oh, yeah. Yeah, we didn't like that. We stopped doing that. And it got bad that one. Remember it got bad that one time? Yeah. Uh, but now, no, we don't do that anymore. And yeah, things are better now. Things are more voluntary, much more peaceful. You know, we just, we just, everybody gets along better now because because those things came up in the past. And then, you know, when things died down, we we addressed them. We learned the lesson. 
Uh, it's never too soon to start learning the lessons. And, you know, history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes in the spiral of progress. It also gets faster and faster. And we're learning like in real time by being able to even CNN can't deny that they have to cover the story. And CNN obviously has other you know interests here. But they, they, they really have like in light of Minneapolis is going, hey, we might disband our police force. As, as journalists, they have to go, well, when has this been done before? Oh, yeah, Camden, we have to cover the story. How to go? Oh, it went pretty well, didn't it? Hmm, all right. Violent crime dropped 42% in seven years. Crime rate dropped from 79 per 1,000 to 44 per 1,000. Capelli credits the improvement to new community-oriented policing, which prizes partnership and problem-solving over violence and punishment. It starts from an officer's first day. When a new recruit joins the force, they're required to knock on the doors of homes in the neighborhood they're assigned to patrol. They introduce themselves and ask neighbors what needs improving. That's awesome. Like that, that in and of its, I go, you know what? If I lived, like, and I would want that here. You know what I, you know what I mean? Even out here, as rural as we are, we really don't need it. And hopefully eventually never will. But I could imagine if this community got developed enough that we had a Juniper Wood security force that was a community safety police. And we kind of already do with the volunteer fire department, which is awesome because they respond to like medical calls and other emergencies. And we have the sheriff's auxiliary, right? But if, if, if like imagine if we, we could hire the sheriff's auxiliary away from the uh, from the county sheriff's department and say, look, we 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 all decided to pool our money. You know, we all got our credit cards chipped in. We have a we have a Patreon, right? Jim Freedom is providing natural law enforcement services in Juniper Wood Ranch area. You got it. And you know, I'm, Jim has better things to do. And no offense, but you're not qualified, and I wouldn't. But you'd be a good, you'd be better than any cop, and you would be providing a service, and you would go out, and I would think if I'm chipping in, I would like this guy. I'd like his number. I'd like to be able to text this person if I'm chipping in ten, and, and I could see if I was in a, you know, in the position, I could chip in, you know, fifty, hundred bucks a month, and say, you know, that goes towards. You know, Jim Freedom, Officer Jim Freedom, Peace Officer Jim Freedom Salary, Peace Officer Jim Freedom of Natural Law Enforcement Services Incorporated, right? You know, out here, um, I would want you to come knock on my door at some point. Like if, Out here, there's no door yeah. to knock on, you know, but I'd want you to leave a note on the fence. And I want you to have an open house. And I want to be able to meet you face to face and say, cool, man. So if you see me losing my shit because someone poisoned me, you know, you're not going to shoot me because now you know I'm a rational human being. I'm a good guy. This is who I am. Yeah. You know, even just having that effect in the paradigm of modern policing, changing things is huge. Training emphasizes de-escalation. Now, the ultimate accountability for de-escalation would be market forces, preservation of value, accountability for damages and liability, right? But de-escalation still is something that should be you know, naturally incentivized. And the department's use of force policy makes clear that deadly force is the last option. It really should be a never option. I mean, the the British uh, police force are able to do this. Why can't we? Can't we do this in America? They're not armed. They don't use deadly force. They, you know, in in and I, yeah, they have SWAT teams. I know, I know. Yes, they're backed up by that. But generally speaking, um, you know, even going against someone with a gun would 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 an, someone with a gun ever shoot an officer? If the only thing the officer could do is tase them, uh, I better tasers and pepper spray. I don't know. Um, I, I would leave it to the market balance to determine whether or not an officer should be armed and the risk and liability of the people involved in the community being served. But uh, yeah, in terms of government today, I, I think disarm the police. Like really that more than defund the police or just along with it, disarm the police. You know, make them, if they're going to do anything, they have to do it by, uh, you know, a non-deadly means of force. Uh, now police host pop-up barbecues and pull up in Mr. Softy trucks to get to know residents. They host drive-in movie nights. Um, recently, the movie of choice was The Lion King, along what used to be known as the city's heroin highway. The Community First Initiative has made improving diversity within the force of priority, too. Whites are the minority in Camden, so Capelli said the new department has hired more black and brown officers to serve black and brown residents. 
Like, I hate that this is a reality. I hate that this is relevant. I hate that we still live in a racist enough world where people are, are inclined to uh, congregate and, and identify by race. Um, and, I, and I hate the affirmative action you know, discrimination that's inherent in this. But actually, as a police reform in the current paradigm, I'm kind of okay with it. Um, because I know if we went straight to a market paradigm for, for social justice and, and for natural law enforcement, uh, the racism problem would, would get way smaller because you'd have huge de-escalation there. And if it happened now, there might be ethnic communities that are more inclined to hire uh, ethnic enforcement officers. And if that's the case, you know, I, okay, I will of all that. Eventually, we'll take on the Bullworth strategy, right? We'll just keep screwing each other till we all come out the same color, and it won't matter at all. But until then, yes, I, I don't really have a problem with this. Um, Capelli said the new department also hired over 100 officers who were in the old department. They joined a department which now has over 400. So basically, they, they got you know three quarter new and a whole new leadership and organization. And you know this is uh, this is just a really positive indication of police reform that's on the horizon learning from the lessons of camden and you know as, as libertarians it's kind of like when are we going to win when are, when are we going to win the you know, we might never you know we might win issue by issue I, I should say we might never win politically because we win in reality in policy in more substantive ways and you know it's because of work of so many police awareness activists and i, I go back all the way to cop block Pete Ayer and Adamo Freeman really bringing this message uh, to the mainstream, uh, certainly from the libertarian movement to the mainstream. The awareness of police abuse, the need for reform is now such an obvious thing. The history, even though it's been seven years, all right, we've got a great test case. Can we do this? Can we learn the lessons from Camden, New Jersey? Yeah, I think if they can do it, anybody in America can do it. We can have uh, major police reforms that while not perhaps uh, as, as much as some of us would like, can be, you know, even incrementally over the next few years, you know, I, I'm optimistic. I think we can do this. I think we are going to do this. I think we are going to have uh, a period over. It's not going to be overnight. It's not going to be enough to get us out of this mess right away and avoid a lot of the economic consequences we're facing. Like I said, it's not going to be over the next month or two that you're going to see uh, a massive wave of police reforms. The systems is not that flexible. But the demand, the realization, the undeniable lessons from history of cities like Camden and so many others means that over the next few years, we are going to see a wave of incremental police reforms that really have the potential of reducing the viciousness and the injustice of the police state I think somewhere on the scale of 80, 90%. And that's a beautiful thing that we have to look forward to.